two, one, action! What the hell is that? We carved this 14-foot tiger shark, the front part of it, to use for an effects gag on loss. The, the original part was carved out of two-pound urethane foam. And then we made a three-part mold off of this, and we split on the case line of all the fins so that I could have one half of each fin in the mold. What we then did was, inside of each one of these parts of the mold, we laid up three-eighths of an inch of clay, and then we cast a fiberglass core inside that. Took the whole thing apart, cleaned it up, put it back together, and filled up the space that the clay occupied with urethane foam. And that gave us our shark down here. One of the things in the show was the shark, and as we've said before, as we like to put in Easter eggs, we thought it would be a great idea to put in an Easter egg uh, in that episode, and we decided on the bottom of the shark that we would just brand the shark and give it uh, one of the Dharma logos, again, thinking that nobody would see it and it would just be for us. However, we actually had uh, mistimed the shot and it was actually much brighter than it was originally supposed to have been. I know many viewers uh, became very excited when they caught the Dharma logo on the tail of the shark. It was a pretty cool addition which we did. Don't be an idiot! You see that toothy son of a bitch? You ain't been squeezed. Got it. Got it. I think that there is a particular and specific relationship and a value to shooting water work actually, like, at sea. Because the water... Um, behaves in a particularly idiosyncratic way when you're at sea and the actors are forced to relate to that. In fact, the water becomes another character in your story. And the more kind of vibrant and alive and organically true it is, the better the show is. I was trying to save your damn kid. I got a phone call uh, a couple of weeks before we started work, uh, and the phone call was, hey, Harold, you should learn how to swim this year. <laughs> so I, uh, I was like, good, thanks, thanks for the heads up. And so, uh, so I started taking swimming lessons, and then uh, we got right back into the water at night in the ocean and, you know, just started shooting all that stuff on the raft. We were like three days out there on the water at night, uh, and primarily, if not completely submerged, at least, always touching water or water touching us. It wasn't like we were on the dry raft. We were on pieces of the raft. Everything is moving. Our lightning platform is moving. Our camera boat's moving. The boat on which the portions of the raft on which the actors are is moving. Um, and they're all moving out of sync with each other. None of them are moving in unison. And that problem, that challenge becomes like multiplied tenfold when you actually attempt to shoot in the water and particularly at night. But at the end of the day, um, what you end up getting is a degree of reality that you can't really achieve any other way. 